Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to you, the viewer, at whatever time you may be viewing this at. Currently, you are about to watch the graduation video from the Coyote Valley Education Center. I'm here to break down the agenda. Right now, we are on the introduction. Next, we will be doing our opening, which is going to incorporate the graduates' names from eighth all the way up to college. And then we will be doing our opening prayer. After that, we'll be doing our introduction to our guest speaker. Then after that, we'll be moving on to the guest speaker. And then after that, we'll be introducing our graduates done by Bryant Herrera. And then finally, we will be moving on to our closing. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching and enjoy. Mamur Kodoname Amito Kaloir To the Ham To Chitaka the Ham To Nanke Kanema Nankeja Nan Pidim Ma to ke shikha tika A mi to ke kham tika Hello everyone, thank you for showing up to our you know, virtual ceremony presentation. So the person I'll be introducing is Viva Brinton. She's been a student of ours for many years. She was a worker. Uh, she started here, you know, all the way from preschool to elementary to middle school to high school. It's been an honor to know her for the last 13 plus years. Uh, as, as a student, she was great. She was excellent. She did everything that was expected from a student. In a student standpoint, she excelled in every level. And then to have her as a worker was, you know, a true honor. She cared about the children as much as all of us here. You know, she put in the time, she sacrificed for even her own personal life, her own family life to make sure we, our students were satisfied and happy. As a college student, you know, she was going back and forth from here to the universities, uh, and she did this all while you know, tackling other daily tasks. So yes, again, Viva Britain, introduction to her as a guest speaker for us. Sentemana, Viva Britain, Ke Ana. Hello everyone, how are you? My name is Viva Britain. I am an enrolled member of the Cotty Valley tribe. I lived on the reservation since the age of two. I am a mother, a wife, and I am currently wrapping up my first year of teaching at Ukiah High School. My colleagues believe that I may be the first Native American woman who ever has taught math at Ukiah High, and I take 
such pride in, in that. And I hope that that opens the door for more possibilities. I hope the youth will follow if they're interested in becoming a teacher in the future, that, you know, that I will be there to give them advice or guide them in any way that I can. I would like to tell you a little bit more about myself so you guys can learn about my journey. When I was born, I was I was immediately faced with many challenges and obstacles. Um, I was born with a mild form of cerebral palsy, which just causes my right side to be a little weaker than the rest of my body, and that causes me to limp. I was a preemie. My mother gave birth to me when she was only seven months pregnant. I have never considered these obstacles and challenges as a di disadvantage. I believe it only made me the woman that I am today. I see myself as resilient, goal-oriented, and determined. I want to say those are the three qualities that helped me push through my educational journey and it led up to where I am today. So in the beginning, when I was very young living on the reservation, I knew right away that I would never be the ba best athlete or or be great at basketball like like all of my cousins but I did realize my love for books and that I realized that I w was an excellent student I excelled at school so that was my that that's where my mindset was I was going to put all of my energy towards that if I knew I could excel at it going back to saying I knew I wasn't going to be the ba best athlete or anything like that I actually earned the eighth grade PE award at my eighth grade graduation. I was shocked. I guess I always assumed that that award would go to someone who played sports or who was a great athlete. But no, they called my name at the graduation and my PE teacher spoke about how I always gave it my all. I always participated. I never made excuses. Even if something was challenging for me, I always at least tried. And so she thought I, you know, I deserved that award. Um, growing up, I was always one of the students that would always be at the Learning Center. If you ask any of the cousins, they would tell you that, yes, I was always at the Learning Center. I was always doing my homework, always reading. Even in the summers, I was one of the students that was always there. Right when the Learning Center would open, which would be like around 8 o'clock, I grew close with the people, with all the staff that worked in the Learning Center over the years. So I want to say that almost everyone that has ever worked at the Learning Center, they all played an important role in my education journey. And I want to thank them for that. Like I was saying, in the summers, they would have like a reading contest. They would want to see which student read a certain amount of books every week. That There was a chart where they kept track of it. And um, anyone who read the most books by the end of the summer, there was always a prize that someone could win. And I want to say for the first two or three years, I was the one that always won. I, I remember the first year they gave out a bike. And then the second year was like a dream catcher. And so... Because of the Learning Center is where my my love for books even grew more. Until today, I just love reading. Not only did I see the Learning Center as my second home, it was a place where I was comfortable and where I could um, continue learning. A funny story is that it, it actually was the place where I first met my husband and my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law, Cindy, was the education activities coordinator at the time. Me and my husband were about seven years old when I first met him. The Learning Center was also where I got my first job right after high school. I attended uh, Mendocino College and um, I was asked to tutor the high school students, mainly in math, but I tutored in everything. And throughout my college journey, I always had a place here at the Learning Center. They always had a job for me, or or even if it wasn't a job, I just came here to volunteer. I always um, enjoyed working with our youth, and I believe that just working with the youth throughout the years here at the Learning Center, this is how I discovered I wanted to be a math teacher. So the Learning Center played a very important role in my life. I hope that many of the other youth now 
you guys will utilize the Learning Center. I feel like we are very blessed to have an education center that we have here. Not only will they help you with your education journey, but they have activities that they, they organize for the youth. It's just a good way for the youth to stay busy and to stay out of trouble and to be surrounded by people that really care about their education and just about their well-being overall. So I talked a little bit about how I um, attended Mendocino College after high school. Um, I graduated from Ukiah High in 2007. I didn't graduate with honors or anything, but I did pretty well in high school. I had a lot going on in my life at that time. Um, my life was very hectic. I gave a hand in raising my nieces and nephews. So. I helped raise them and I made sure to push through to give it my all. I That was one of the first goals that I set for myself was to graduate from high school. Once I achieved that, my next goal was to attend college and I attended Mendocino College right after high school. I knew I would only go there and earn my associates. And then I knew I wanted to achieve my next goal, which was receiving my bachelor's degree. And I went on and did that. I was at Mendocino College a lot longer than I expected. But hey, I did it. I, I couldn't make up what I wanted to do um, with life. That's a huge decision. So if you don't know, if you're graduating high school right now, about to graduate high school, and you don't know what you're going to do, don't worry about it. You still have time to figure it out. It's a big it's a big decision, so you know, take the time to figure that out. I did. I was, you know, most people complete their associate's degree in 2 years. It took me like about 4 years just because I kept switching my majors, but that just I believe that happened for a reason, you know? It it happens that way I could grow and um after I graduated from Mendocino College, I actually took a year off of school and was just working. I ended up transferring to UC Santa Cruz. I was there for, I want to say I was just there for a year. I transferred to UC Santa Cruz because I wanted to major in computer science. But after attending UC Santa Cruz for a year, I realized that computer science wasn't for me. That's where I realized I wanted to um, major in math and possibly become a um, math teacher at that time. UC Santa Cruz was not only so expensive, I just felt like I wanted to be closer to family at the time. It was right after I lost my uncle Richard. And so I just decided it was best for me to to go somewhere that was closer to home. So I ended up transferring to Sonoma State. That's where I majored in pure mathematics and had a minor in statistics. I graduated from Sonoma State in 2016. And right after that, I had my son. He's now three years old. And just last year, I was working here at the Education Center. I was the activities coordinator and also the, a mentor for the Hardy Valley Youth Council. Last year, I decided to go for it and to get out of my comfort zone and take the risk by applying for a teacher math position at, at our local high school. I remember going into my interview, two teachers, two of my former teachers from the high school were actually in the interview room. So that was pretty great, but it was kind of intimidating at the same time, just because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to look good and I wanted to make them proud. When I went to that interview, I left feeling confident. I felt like, I think I got this. And then I, I ended up getting a call that same day and then they wanted to welcome me to Kai High. I was very excited. I knew that this would be a new chapter in my life. My first year of teaching, it was very interesting. It was very challenging at times. There were days where I left the school so happy, feeling off from the energy from the students. But then there were other days where I would come home and I would be so upset and feel defeated. There's always those bad days. But you know what? I just, I continued to go on and try to make relationships with my students and try to prove to, you know, those kids that even though I was a first time, first year teacher, that 
I know I know math. I I'm intelligent and I know that I can help teach you guys this and you know and do well. And I feel like that's what I ended up doing. I never imagined that the year would end by me not being able to see my students in person. I hope that next year will will go a little bit more smoother. I feel like I learned so much this year, but I have so much more to learn. It's only the beginning. So my lesson for you youth is to, no matter what challenges and obstacles that come into, into your life, always, always push forward, give your best effort, believe in yourself. Um, that's the main, that's one of the main things that got me through is, you know, is believing in myself. And luckily I have a great support system with, with the education staff, with my family. So don't be afraid to ask for help too when you need it. You have many people around the reservation or in your family that would, that are there to help and support you in some kind of way. Yeah, so I, w- I just want to congratulate you graduates. You guys did it. Like, this is a huge accomplishment. No one could ever take this moment away from you. you. You're the one that did all of the work. You're the one that put the effort in. Like, be so be very, very proud of you, of yourself. I am. So, yeah, and I, I'm sorry that, you know, that we're all going through this difficult time right now weird time for sure um but we're all we're all going to get through this together and i'm sorry that for some of you you guys um never imagined that your graduation would be going this way like through you know through zoom through this remote way but um hopefully eventually when things get back to normal i hope you guys are able to receive the graduation that you deserve to the eighth grade graduates, my advice to you is to get involved in high school. Get involved in sports or clubs or even try new things. Like when, when I was in high school, I tried photography and I was part of the yearbook. You can, there's classes like sewing, um, wood shop. Just be involved and try new things. You never know, you might be inter- interested in something that you never even thought of before. So yeah, and you know, just do your best and you can't go wrong if you do that. For you, for high school and college graduates, um, wow, this is this is amazing. You guys, you know, this is a time where where so many possibilities are open for you. Um, I would say try to experience as much as you can. Um, memories and experiences are what last a lifetime. Um, don't be afraid to try new things. Um, yeah, so do you guys just go for it. And I'm very proud of you guys. And have a great year. Thank you guys for having me be the speaker this year again. And I just want to say I hope all of the families stay safe. And um, may the Creator watch over our community and everyone. Thank you. Now introducing our graduates, beginning with our 8th grade class. This first student, I've had her for about 13 years. I got to see her actually go from a little girl onto her elementary and middle school life. She has always excelled. She was always on top of her class in the sense that she wanted to be almost a perfectionist she you know she always had this shyness to her but she also once she got you got comfortable with you she opened up going into middle school uh, I you know she was always so bright in every subject she did not ever hesitate on completing her assignment she was everything would had to be right after another um, this eighth grade I you know she was again with this whole COVID 
at first it was kind of, you know, it was a tough for every student to get used to this new structure of uh, academics. But for her, she started nailing it from pretty much after a, a few weeks of it. And she was on top of her assignments, on top of what the teachers were requesting and asking from her. And going into her high school life, I do see that she, she's going to excel. Uh, I don't see her ever stop, you know, slowing down. Um, you know, sometimes, again, it takes some time for her to get used to people, but once she does, she just takes off with um, her academics, with, you know, meeting people, you know, everything like that. So this student right here, I want to give to a thanks to and congratulate her is Kayla Ole. For this next student, um, again, I've had him probably, you know, middle of his elementary life. Uh, he is a, I wouldn't know the way to say it, it's a class clown. He uh, always wants the attention. He always wants to make put uh, smiles on people's faces. Um, what I did notice right off the bat once he started coming to our program on a regular basis and a consistency was that he was tech savvy. Like as much as everything else, his energy and all that, you could just see inside him that he was going, you know, technology was a, a path that he can really follow and, you know, gravitate to as a career. Um, we had to make some certain transitions in his eighth grade pa path. Uh, you know, we put him into an independent study program. But I think once we did that, he, he, it was easy for him to flourish once he got the concept of understanding the responsibilities and what it took for uh, a student to succeed in those type of program. Uh, I, again, I do see, you know, his future for as a high school student can be bright. I mean, if he just, he puts the time in, he focuses on a certain craft, which I think should be computer science. Um, you know, it was a great pleasure working with him. You know, he he never gave us any kind of defiance in terms of, you know, not wanting to do it. I always pushed him and he, you know, he stuck with it. You know, it took some time to for him to get his assignments completed, but it was worth the time that we were putting in. Um, and it was a great time. It was great for him to actually spend. I was able to spend time with him more outside of just a school structure. I was able to be his, uh, you know, his tutor and then actually see him more as a person. Uh, so this student that I am talking about is Malakam Rios. Uh, for this next student that I'm talking about, um, yeah, this one. This one's uh, kind of hurts a little. It does hurt a little bit uh, because of the fact that uh, I, I didn't get to experience this eighth grade as, as I wanted to, or you know. And for the future, I don't know if I'll have him back here on a daily basis. But I had him since he was a little kid. Um, it was I. It was actually an honor to work with his father. Uh, his father taught me a lot uh, of this tribe, and then also just things in life. Um, but he had us. He had me. You know, he introduced his children to me, and uh, you know, and it was just. Uh, it was a. It was. It was great. I mean, this kid was very passionate with his culture. Um, he was very gifted in sports, but in academics also, he he excelled. Um, I think that came from again the you know the, the the household he was coming from. It was you know he was pushed academically, and you know it just showed. Um, but uh, this year, I think, you know, I've had him since he was a little kid, and then this was my first year not having him here in my presence. And uh, I, could, I could feel that. And, but I just knew that if he can stick with his academics and stick with, you know, that, that drive of like how he has in sports, that he would be okay. I do hope that I can get to have him sometime in the future. Uh, for to, just to get to see the daily the daily you know tasks he'll have in his high school life, because uh, again I think academically he can he can he can do it. Um, sports wise, I mean he's very gifted. Uh, he is a multi sport student. Um, I think he will excel in, in 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 his academics and also in his sports at the high school level. So for this student uh, that I'm going to introduce, this is uh, Toddy Ramos. For this next student uh, that we'll be talking about, uh, uh, again, I've had him since he was a uh, kindergarten. Um, and 
throughout his elementary life, I got to actually work with him in the classroom settings. Uh, teachers were allowing me to sit in with him and, you know, and work with him academic-wise, uh, one-on-one. And at first it was, you know, a very shy student and then it really didn't know, you know, didn't really open up. But as the years went on, the comfortability with me and him grew and grew and it got to a point where he, you know, he didn't start to open. Um, so he, again, was very bright in, 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 in technology, but also had the skills as an artist. And I didn't realize this fully until like this, his middle school life. You know, he had his passion for anime, had this passion for, you know, um, uh, cartoon characters and then also comic, comic book characters and started drawing these, these uh, characters on paper and sometimes also on his homework. But I just got to see this part where, you know, he had this artist skills in him. So, and, you know, it, it, it naturally just gravitated to, you know, that artist sets of skills, you know, almost daily. And, uh, and, you know, it was, it was a, it was a great experience I've had with him. Uh, the eighth, this eighth grade year, uh, didn't get to see him as much as I wanted to, but the times I did have him, he, you know, he did what I asked him to do. And he's always has done that. I've always have pushed him. And he's always has given me his his all, you know. Sometimes it did take longer than others, but he never gave any feedback of negativity or defiance. It was always like, okay, Brian, let's uh, let's you know, I'll do what you're telling me to do. Um, so for his high school, you know, I you know, it, it's gonna be the path will be a great one because I think it's we're you know if we can just focus on what he he's great at and which is you know being an artist. I think he can really flourish in that field, um, and that's why I would really hope that you know he, with his academics, he can stay, you know, go consistently to school and you know do these things so that he, those skills can build, and building those skills could then flourish a career for him. Um, and because I, I do see him in like in ten years, I could I could easily see the student working for a comic book company or a, you know, a cartoon company uh, easily. He just has these natural talents. So for this student that I'm talking about is Tommy Ortiz. So for this next student, uh, yes, I've had her also at a young age, uh, kindergarten. Uh, she was a very quiet student, until this day she is. But once you get to really know her, she, you know, she slowly comes out with uh conversations but they are they are too very minimal uh but with this student she definitely academics for her came natural uh and i can say that also for you know the other siblings of hers uh they they came academics to them was natural and they took passion in it you, you can see that you know they almost had to be per, you know perfection at their at their craft and um and this eighth grade, uh, for her, you know, it, her sticking with what she was doing, you know, it, it was she was completing things in in a good manner in the sense that she it just came like that. It was not tough, you know, but there was times where we had to be pushed to um, to get it done. But when it came to it, she can just get you know complete assignments with ease. Uh, there was some some roadblocks and then some you know learning that she had to do, and <clears throat> with tutors and stuff like that. But for the most part, she can grasp it herself. So for her high school life, I mean, you know, it, it's it's it, she can go very many di directions in terms of what she wants to be, and uh, if she really puts her mind to it, I, I think high school will be uh, you know could be a breeze, and could be um, you know completed at a high level uh, she just she does have that in her so for this student that I am talking about is Electra Phalus so for the next student that I will be talking about um, again uh, these kids now I've had them since pretty much kindergarten uh, he you know 
it was a it was a journey with him with having the trust you know from what i believe i mean obviously i cannot speak for him but that you know there was a trust thing that had to happen before anything else was going to come between us or you know in front of us uh he you know he i had to show that you know like i'm gonna i'm gonna be be with there for you and you know you can you can trust me on this and once i got that you know that was you know it took a couple of years but once i got that he you know he was he was an, a kid that opened up you know he talked about his things but at the same time he was quiet he kept things to himself you know and i just knew that you know if i can just be a positive person to him no matter what's going around around him that he, i know for a fact he, he can you know feel you know a, you know a positive atmosphere so i made sure that i could give that to him every time i did see him um and as the relationship built you know the more he opened up the more he was trusting me you know the the more I could see how he was going to flourish in his academics, um, you know, there was again those those certain things that had to happen, you know, you know matur- maturity uh, responsibilities, but if I knew if he can grasp those areas, that academics for him could you know, could be um, easy for him. Uh, I just the thing again had to be, be the consistency. I had to show consistency, but as the years went on. Um, you know, there were some ups and downs, but, you know, he found a way to, when we, him and I had our, our communication, it was, he gave me his all. He didn't, you know, he didn't tell me, you know, he didn't show me defiance in a anger way. He didn't show me defiance in a, in a negative way. He, you know, he, he, I had this, you know, I would tell him like, this is what we need to do. And he'll be like, all right. Um, you know, so for his eighth grade, he, you know, we had to make some certain changes, you know, um, but for the most part, you know, again, when I was able to have him in my uh, presence and have him with me, I was, you know, he, he, whatever I told him we had to do, he, he did it, you know, he didn't tell me like, Brian, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm out of here. Get out, you know, anything like that. Uh, wasn't, you know, again, it wasn't like just a flat, straight road. Uh, we had. You know, there was a times we did have to, you know, have some serious talks, but you know, I, at least I wanted to make sure he knew that I, he, I, he had me in his corner, and I was not going to leave that corner, and that he can, you know, at the end of the day, I, I'll be here for him. So uh, for his high school life, I know if we can grasp some things down, put a, a you know, a strong structure and foundation towards his academics, I, you know, he can, he can move forward and. You know, there's, you know, like his his past can go in many different ways. I mean, you know, he's like just like the, a lot of the students now. They're so tech savvy that, you know, he could go down these paths. I did see a little, a small glimpse of coding with him, in him, and I was seeing this. You know, he he can grasp these things pretty naturally. Um, so yeah, if we can get those things, you know, honed in, I think at his high school life can be a pretty great one. Uh, so the student I am talking about is Talon Trepa. All right, for this next student, um, yes, I've also have had him uh, since he was a little kid. Um, and never once, I, I can't even remember one time this student has ever showed any type of defiance. He's always been a student that whatever we needed to be done was it was done and you know whatever direction we were given to these students uh he followed them uh he was you know he's a very quiet kid but he has this you know funny side to him um you know throughout elementary i mean this kid you could sports was a a, (laughs) was a huge and is a huge uh aspect in his life um you know he's just he was natural I mean, he, this kid has a cannon of an arm <laughs> for uh, playing football. You know, his basketball skills are just, you know, superb. Um, and he's only in eighth grade. Uh, so automatically you can see at a young age, I was, you know, sports is going to be, you know, in his life. And then this could actually pave a way for him as for a career. And I truly do believe that, um, you know, if you just see him 
out there. He yeah, he's just you can see there's just this natural flu fluidness to him. And um, you know, again, academics. You know, there's times it didn't come natural to him, but it didn't stop him. He you know he did try. He put in the effort. He you know he worked towards it. Um, and again, there was never one time I could honestly say uh, you know say that he showed defiance towards our direction of you know the expectation of for academics um so for his high school life i do see that you know if he can fall, do the path of do the best he can in academics and still excel like the way he's excelling in sports that easily he can be you know be receiving the scholarships uh for uh his uh sports career and um and that speaks volume because you know not everybody gets that opportunity and uh sometimes people have to work really hard to get to i think the skill set that this child has um and it, you know some of it a lot of it comes naturally to him he's just a natural gifted athlete uh so yes um you know his, his high school life is you know it's going to be very bright if he sticks with you know his academics and does puts the best effort he can in act in his academics and then also ex keeps continues to excel in his sports life we will we can easily see this student playing at a d1 uh institution and then even go into a professional career in this uh in this sports world so for that student uh i'm presenting is anthony zacharias so for this next student uh i didn't get to have her in like during school years, uh, she was uh, with her parent uh, outside of, t out of this area. But I just, in the summertime when she did come, she was just, God, she was full of energy, still full of energy. Uh, has a, a mix, a little bit of everything. There's like seriousness, but prankster, you know, uh, class clown, everything inside of her. And the thing I have to do mention is that her parent, I had her parent as my first year working here as one of my, uh, she was my first senior, her sen uh, when I was, yeah, working here. And when I did get her child in the summertime, I did see the, the parent aspect come out uh, out of her. And I'm just like, yes, you're totally your mother. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so she always, like, again, she has this bright smile. Um, and this year was my kind of my first year I could have her in the terms of academics. It wasn't very much, um, you know, uh, but I did get to experience her academically. And the one thing I would say is that she, you know, I, you know, I can't, you can't gauge a child within like X amount of months or even weeks to go like, oh yes, they're, they're, they're bright and you know, they're gonna do this. But what I could say is that you know the things that we did do together she gave me gave me her full attention you know and there was a little bit of you know jokeness inside there but like when we had sat down and really you know try to learn subjects and really you know when she was I was teaching her topics she really you know absorbed that in uh, so yes it, it, you know she's uh, it's just great to have her around you know because again she will put that smile on your face um, and I do see that, you know, for her high school career, if she can really buckle down and put down, you know, get serious with it, I do think that her academic life could be, you know, a positive one. And uh, I don't know if she does play sports. I believe she does, but I hope she does because, yes, this, this, this child, uh, she is pretty lanky. <laughs> and so I could see basketball being down her path and then also volleyball easily. Um, so I hope I get to have her sometime in her high school life here, just so I can fully get the full experience of you know being around her on a daily basis. Uh, so for the student that I am talking about is Kulani Noodle Burbank. So for this next student, um, I've had her at a young age too. And she was a really go-getter. Um, she always had like a smile. She always was laughing and you know, she would always have this high energy type of uh, 
type of just energy in general. And, you know, it was just, she, she made me laugh so many times. Uh, she's just, uh, you know, you have to do help her with some homework and then she would do something that would just like, you know, make you just crack up. Um, and, but at the same time, she did have this side where, it, you know, if she was not in the mood or if she, something did, something happened to her because she would give you these, these little dark eyes, like, you know, these eyes that would like go right through you. And, um, and she still has those to this day. I mean, you know, she has a certain look. Uh, it's been, you know, I've had her, you know, through our program consistently throughout the years, but in these last about two years, uh, she has come from here and then to her, uh, between here and Lake County. And, um, you know, I do miss her cause you know, it, you know, I get to see her, but I do miss her to have her every day. Cause again, she, she could change the energy of a room and she was a student that like, you can tell them like, let's, we got to get this done. And she would, you know, she would get it done. And, uh, and I just kind of, at times when she was younger, I could use her for that. And then other kids would follow suit. They would follow her. And, um, and you know, it was great. So yeah, the student I am talking about is Tyra Gonzalez. For these next three students that I'm going to be talking about, uh, I haven't had a chance to work with them one on one because they're not from this immediate area. Um, I have spoken to some of their parents and, you know, just their parents. I just know that they're really engaged with their children. They show the passion uh, for their their children to receive the assistance they need. And they're always are talking about them here. Uh, so. Yeah, I w you know I do hope down the path line you know that we can uh, have a type of bond where we you know we can you know work with each other academically or any support that they need. Um, so for these three students that I'm talking about is Gabriel Pardo, Emily Williams, and Brittany Martin. Now moving forward, we'll be talking about our high school graduates. So for this student that I'm going to be talking about, I had to, I had my experiences with him beginning his, you know, late elementary life. Um, he, you know, uh, he, when I first met him, he was very outgoing. He, you know, he talked about, you know, the things that he liked. He was very energetic. And I noticed that, you know, from the very, very beginning, our first conversations. And as the years went on, you know, we, uh, stayed connected with each other and then going through his high school life you know you know there was a bit a few changes here and there but he i he just had this thing about him where he was you know he kind of knew what he wanted to do you know and from the, that he i know he wanted to do some type of, of trade if it was going to be construction welding uh automotive he just had that about him and this year and at his institution that he was uh going to he had the op he got the opportunity to actually go work in trade sk skill areas in job fields and learn that those type of trade skills and i was fortunate enough to be in the meeting with him when he had to sign his contract with the company that he was going to begin his internship program with and right off the bat, you, you know, the, the owner of the company himself stated that, you know, this student can go a really long way in this, uh, in this field. He just had the natural ability to get things done. And, um, and you know, he just liked to have them around. Uh, so I was very, you know, that was, that was great to hear that. And then as the, the year went on, you know, and, and me talking to his instructors and then talking to the, you know, that the in, internship uh, uh, manager, you know, those 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 words kept coming back that he's just a natural gifted student in these uh, skill trades. So moving forward, I really do hope that, you know, he does follow what he wanted to talk about. And that was actually starting his own business in this uh, in this uh, field. And um 
I really do hope that he does pursue that because he can actually, you know, have a legit um, business and he has the skills already at such a young age. So I can easily see him by his early 20s, mid 20s, having uh, a, a business. So uh, with the student I'm talking about, this is uh, Joseph James. So for this next student that I will be talking about, um, I had her since she was uh, pretty young. Um, and then the last two years she moved away. But, you know, this this person I was speaking on, she, she's, she's a crack up. She puts a smile on a person's face. Um, you know, she's very outgoing and um, and it what was great is that she did come back uh after she completed uh, her high school career and uh came to me uh recently uh, not so long ago and she came to me and she's like hey um i want to start my uh, college career and so i was like okay awesome um let's uh let's let's start this path and so i wasn't sure how much i was going to get uh from her in the sense of if she's going to show up consistently to finish off all the paperwork cuz once you start, you know, your introduction of your college career, it's a lot of it's a lot of paperwork to finish to get you enrolled. So, you know, but she she showed up consistently, you know, and I was I threw her times to her. I'm like, "All right, let's start like at nine o'clock very early." And she's and she didn't hesitate. She's like, "Okay, I'll be there." And she was very punctual. So, I you know, as we're doing these processes, this process, you know, I was like, okay, usually a student at these, these times, they know what they want, but at the same time, they're kind of like, I, you know, they go back and forth. And so I we always try to tell them like, okay, well, if anything, you can start your general ed and get the general ed completed. So then you can then give yourself at least a, a year or two to see what, you know, what you're, you're feeling out there. But right from the beginning, she she told me she's like, no, I'm, I'm I already know what I want to become, and I was like, okay, I was like, so you already thought of this, and she's like, definitely, she's like, I want to become a, a pharmacist, and I was like, oh wow, I was like, all right, um, you know, that's 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 a great career, and she she got into detail of why she did, and I was just so amazed on that, it was that she had this real understanding of like, you know, she she was around this type of a world of you know pharmaceuticals that she learned herself she you know she knew she had all these kind of history already with this career and that she was just gonna bring it to the forefront and get it make it a, have degrees in it and I thought that was just amazing alone because she understood she's like she understood that she had this these uh, skill sets and that she was gonna just enhance them so that's very uh, that was very uh, great to hear that and so moving forward, I just really hope, you know, if she sticks with it, I think she will, you know, get to her goals easily. Um, if she, cause it, she already had her such a strong mindset of what she wanted. So, um, and I hope that she does uh, pursue and finish that into that career because it's a, it, you know, it's an awesome one. And no, uh, it didn't, we didn't. And also when I did, I haven't spoke to her for about a year and a half or so. And then when we did talk, you know, it was back to that whole, being a ha you know being a crack up having you know being a, a funny person so that was it was great to know that she didn't really change from our the conversation and the bond that we built so um yeah so this person that this student that I am talking about is um Aaliyah Faylis so for this next student um i've seen we I've seen him around, you know, throughout the years, but I didn't get to really know who he was or establish a a a bridge with him until the probably the last these last two years they started coming to our program on a regular basis. And you know, at first it was you know we you know closed you know you got to gain trust, and as just the the years or as the you know the years went on and you know the conversations we had i just knew from from my experiences he was really like kind of it was always straightforward with me so i gave him this nickname called the truth <laughs> and uh he just you know like i would be telling you know he would be talking about things and he was just very just like 
boom, straight to the point, get to the answer. And that was like his, his uh, person, you know, his, that type of personality uh, for me. And um, so we started talking about these things of like, okay, what do you, you know, is we're going through your, your education life and you're, you're at the, you know, the, the finish line. Like, what, did you, what is it we really want to um, pursue? Because at the institution that he was going, he, he had the option to pursue any type of trade or career. And then that school was allowing those students to go to and establish internships in, within those, those fields. And, you know, right from the, the beginning, he, he mentioned he wanted to open up his own business. And it's like, okay, all right, you know, and then usually when a, when a student or, you know, person at a young age starts about a business, they, you know, they have these ideas, but they don't have them like concrete, you know. But then we, I start asking him the questions of well, what's this, what, what kind of business do you want to uh, create? And uh, he said, oh, I want to actually start like a, a shoe, a shoe business. And so we started going into these these type of um, you know alleys of discussions of these like you know what shoes do you want to sell and these things and he was like just really on it I was like this is the, how I want my business to look like this is how I want what I'm going to be selling out of there this is what I want to do and I was just like all right you know like you you really have this passion and this and this drive and the, you know this love for this type of you know career path and I was like you know run with it then um if you really feel inside that you know that's what you want to do um you know you know as you get older is to pursue these type of business adventures then go for it and so uh this year um as the year went on you know he, he didn't shy away he actually made his projects around this uh this business um model and uh you know they he really took you know took took the light on this and um but you know again we we went down these paths of you know having the the covid uh situation occur and you know wasn't able to like continue talking about this to him at the to the uh finish line so uh, i do see that if he really still has that passion and he has that drive of wanting to be different and wanting to have something that nobody else is doing really around here and then but make it succeed that i do see that he will succeed in this in this adventure um you know i 100 percent you know back him behind it i really hope that he does do that because he's doing not the norm so for this student that i'm speaking about is k Mane brown So for this next student that I'm going to be speaking on, um, I got to build a relationship and a bond or a path with 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 her at a young age. Uh, she was always around, um, but at the same time, you know, she didn't come to our program so much uh, consistently on a daily basis. But when I did talk to her, she was always had a smile on her face. You know, always had this, you know, cheery up energy coming out of her. And, um, and that, that was great. So going through her high school life, uh, she went to a couple different programs. And a lot of these programs were in independent study. And when you go into independent study, you do have this, this um, opportunity to, you know, go explore other educational fields that you wouldn't explore in a traditional K-12 program. And they, you know, depending on the institution, but a lot of the independent institutions, they encourage students to go, if they're ready for it, to go pursue their college career and, or go pursue college classes so that they can uh, do both worlds. And um, in saying that, you know, she started doing that. Uh, she started, you know, you know, halfway through her high school life, she started really taking college classes. Um, and it wasn't an easy path, you know, because once you start taking college classes at such a young age, you have to have this maturity level and you have to have this type of uh, responsibility and uh, um, that you have to have within yourself to, you know, go um, and be successful in this. And, uh, you know, she 
you know, it was an up and down uh, path. But, you know, for the majority of the time, she always t- went to go tackle it, though. She she put herself out there to go, yes, I'm going to go take these classes. Or I'm going to go take, you know, be a college student this upcoming uh, fall or spring. And, you know, it we can, as educators, can tell these students to go do this, you know, if they have the time. And we can tell them all this, but it has to come from the student themselves to get themselves, uh, you know, there. Get themselves, you know, to do the work and things like that. Uh, and she had that aspect of like, I'm going to go take these classes to make sure I am starting my college career, but also making sure that I'm my high school path is, you know, secured. And this year, um, you know, she took on, she spearheaded, uh, you know, college courses as she was a high school, high school senior. And again, it's, sometimes it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to do. You know, because there's the expectations that you have to be still of what's uh, required from you to be a high school student, but also then you have the uh, requirements or the expectation of to be a college student. So she had to juggle these uh, two worlds and then plus also juggle her personal life and, you know, all those. So there's like three to four worlds that sometimes these children are are juggling um, just to maintain or, you know, keep afloat. So... But, you know, I did see that she, if she put in the time, she put in the effort and she put it, set her priorities in order that she could easily, you know, you know, conquer the, the, you know, this college, this college world. And, um, you know, we've had discussions. So her, you know, her vision is to, you know, leave this area and, you know, go pursue education outside. And that's great because she then is going to, step into what I say is a new world out there, you know, uh, stuff that she won't be u- used to. And, you know, for sometimes that's a scary thing, but at least at the end you get to have that experience and go, you know what, I at least go, I went to try it. I hated it. I loved it. And, you know, you move on with life. So I'm so, I am, I'm just, you know, happy that she's, she's going to um, go do that. Um, so she will be, uh, yeah, yeah leaving our area so the student i am talking about is maya mccoy so for this student uh that's next oh god she's um i hold all my kids dear to my heart you know but this one i do because i've had her i had her pretty young i mean i had her from the very beginning and she was in our program consistently throughout all these years. Um, and, uh, you know, um, I was fortunate enough to work with, uh, with her mother and, um, and then also, you know, be in that realm of, you know, um, keeping them, uh, keeping a relationship with both the parents and, you know, and her and keeping it, uh, strong. Um, I knew from a very, very young, she was a, you know, she was a firecracker. (laughs) She, um, you know, she, oh, she, if she got mad, she got mad, you know, and it was like that little, there's a cartoon out there where this little guy catches on fire. (laughs) She's like that, you know, when she was younger. And, but as the years went on, you know, um, you know, it mellowed out, you know, it was still in there, but it mellowed out. And the thing, though, with our relationship that her and I built, we didn't, you know, there was never negative defiance from her towards, you know, towards me. Uh, There's a few times that, yeah, she got mad, you know what I mean? She was, you know, because, you know, there's things I have to, you know, put, put, you know, put things in straight. And, uh, you know, there's those times, you know, she would get mad, but... Other than that, our relationship, she didn't, never gave me any type of defiance. We could talk with each other, um, and it can, it would, the, our conversations would flow, you know. And, like, you know, I just wanted her to know that I would always be by her. You know, if she ever needed anything, I was going to be there. So as the years went on, um, her high school path, you know, there's there a few changes within it, but for the most part, she knew what she needed to do and she was going to get it done. 
you know and so when i would have these conversations in her high school life i would tell her like you know hey like we need to, this needs to happen we need to step up here you know to meet this end goal or to meet the get to that finish line and uh never once did she go like no brian we're not gonna that's not gonna happen or no i'm not gonna she would just listen to it and go okay and then sometimes i'll be like is she really getting me is she really understanding what i'm trying to tell her and then i would go in the next week speak with her and then also speak with her instructor and then the teacher would be like yeah like uh you know she's done she laid it out this she did this and this and this and i'll be like okay that's what we talked about and she uh she went to and she completed it so um for this year um it, it was that we went down that same path um you know anytime we we had a conversation i told her you know hey need we need to do this we need to get this done and she did it and you know and every time it was a very calm you know collective uh conversations we had with each other you know we just go this is what needs to happen and then she's like all right so i got more felt more comfortable with with her one to two answers, you know, of, okay, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that happens, you know, uh, and then I knew that she would, you know, she would get to that, those uh, end line goals for herself. So moving forward for her, um, you know, I do see that, you know, she could work with kids. I mean, she's been around, she's always been a big sister to her siblings, and, you know, there's times she took responsibility of having to be the the one that you know to watch them and you know make sure that they ate or you know and and that still showed up throughout the high her high school life she was making sure they came here for our food program or you know they were here to get you know be around here and that this spoke volume so i do see like her with her with children i think she could have a you know, great career in that in child development um so i do wish her the best um as much as I want to hold my kids all to me and never leave this area because it does hurt, <laughs> um, I know I hope she goes to seize the world, and um, and if she has somebody by her to do that, you know I really hope, you know she can experience that with, with you know, certain people. But if not, I hope that she can find it within herself that she can do it by herself if she needs to. So, yeah, for this student I'm talking about is Jalissa Acosta. So for this next student, um, I haven't had him for a few years now. It's been about ew, six, seven plus years. I haven't had the student in our that was here on a regular basis in our program. Uh, when he was younger, you know, he was a very quiet guy, um, but he, you know, he could uh, once he opened up, he, you know, we would talk. To you guys, we can have a conversation with him, but it was very, he was very quiet. Whatever from what I and as the years went on, he would come here sometimes for our, our summer programs and stay here and for the summer. And when he did, I would try to you know, you know, continue to build that bridge with him. And at first, you know, there was, he would just stay quiet. I would ask him things, and he would just uh, you know, very stay very you know, very quiet and wouldn't answer. So the one thing I knew <laughs> that I was like. You know, I, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try a different approach. I'm gonna speak to him um, in Spanish and see if that changes anything, because he is fluent uh, in uh, fully bilingual in Spanish. And I approached it that way, and I won't forget the first time I actually attempted it. You know, he he looked at me kind of in shock, and he kind of just stood there quiet. And um, I knew then I was like, okay, I probably can communicate with him with this path. Um, and so I, you know, he still didn't really answer. He gave me really short answers. And then I just consist, you know, stayed consistent of speaking to him in uh, Spanish. And uh, it did get to one day he actually spoke <laughs> sentences with me. And I was just like, relieved I was like oh man okay I got through <laughs> like you know and so that's how it was so you know throughout the years when he did show up I did you know go I knew that that was our outlet I can speak with him on and uh, I think it helped um, in the sense of you know if I needed to communicate with him I could uh, but you know as the years went on 
um, you know, I, you know, I didn't have as much uh, conversations or as much communication with him as I would want wanted. But you know, I knew he was doing he was going down certain paths because the, you know his family would you know turn in his student recognitions and he was getting GPAs and he was getting student months. So I knew that he was like okay, like he is doing things. So um, you know, I really hope him wish him the best. Um, and I really think, you know, he, uh, you know, whatever he wants to, you know, pursue, he can pursue it. Um, so for this student that I'm talking about, it's going to be Steven Garduno. All right, for this next student, um, I haven't had the opportunity to build any type of um, relationship or bridge with her. Um, you know, but I have worked with this family uh, you know, for, throughout the years with other, you know, with other her, her uh, siblings. And, uh, yeah, it, I mean, this, I mean, I can just talk hi real highly about this family. Um, I always try to give them the, the same opportunity and the same opportunities that we have here with, to them and where they live. Um, so if she is, you know, if she's, you know, I'm sure she's going to do great things, um, you know, moving forward. Uh, it's just that family, that side of the family just, just has that. And it's uh, great to see throughout the, you know, throughout their, the kids. So uh, the student I am talking about is Aliana Huerta. So for this student, um, I never, haven't had a chance to, uh, you know, have conversations or build because they don't live in our media area. Um, I think they, I think this living student does live across the United States. So, um, you know, but I did have, get to have uh, a form of communication with the parent and parents, and especially with the father a few years back. And um, so I, you know, I do hope, you know, I can g make that um, bond at some point and, you know, her pursuing uh, her college career that we can build that communication of, you know, getting all the assistance she can through her tribe and stay communicating with us and uh, how things are going. So I just want her to know that, you know, um, you know, we, she, doors are fully open for her um, in anything that she needs help. And, you know, I have had communication with her parents and we had had those discussions, but moving forward, I, you know, I just really want her to know that, you know, um, no matter how far she is, that, any way we the education can help her, her tribe can help her. We will. Uh, I don't ever want any of the children or any students feel that, you know, just because they don't live in this immediate area that they don't can't receive any type of assistance or feel any type of uh, connection with their tribe or with their departments. So, uh, for this student I'm speaking on is Grace Bowles. Finally. Now introducing our college graduates. So for this college graduate, um, what I have seen is this person took on the responsibility to help navigate and move a tribe um, through its uh, adventures. Um, and that's no easy task, I, I you know, because you have, you know, at least over a hundred people that you're guiding through, um, and to make sure that you're going to get to the, the end goals that you, or the visions that you have for your people. When this person was doing this, they also did. The, they also were doing the path of receiving their um, their educational uh, their educational credentials, and you know I have to respect that because you know it's you're running. You know, you're running a, a tribe and then you're also having to do your personal life and get through school. And, um, yeah, and I, I just, I, I just, you know, applaud that because it's, I'm sure that is not no easy task. Um, you know, you have two worlds you have to satisfy and one world you have to, you know, make sure that again, you know, many people are, 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 you know, being guided and you're moving a direct, a certain direction for those people. So, uh, but they it was, 
it's been done it's been completed and uh and moving forward you know i can see i do see great things because there's has been you know changes within this tribe as the years i've been here uh so for this person i'm talking about is michael hunter he received a bachelor's degree in liberal studies at sonoma state university For this next college graduate, um, I've had the <laughs> the pleasure of you know knowing her for all the years I've worked here. Uh, actually, she was a worker earlier uh, when I when I first started, and uh, she, the first thing I I knew or I got was she was a class clown, a crack up. Uh, she was very you know very upbeat, you know, and always on the go 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 go. Uh, and then as the years went on, I, you know, was able to be by her, you know, see her do her, uh, college, uh, career. And, uh, you know, there was at times it was just a bit here, a bit there, uh, and a, you know, a bit over here, but she was, cons what I noticed was she was consistently at least trying and trying. And then these, I would, could say that these last few years, she really took it r for stride and she just spearheaded it, um. You know, with take being full time st student status and getting you know things done, um, and I do say she, she's very on top of like you know, oh hey, I, I turned this in. Where does it stand? Or where are we doing with you know this? And you know, she's very you know curious about what's um, what we're, we offer and what we can do, and uh, and it's great. I think they you know she has every right to uh, uh, feel that and ask for those things and. Uh, so yeah, um, and then within this year, you know, she was getting to the finish line and then I got the great opportunity that she uh, became a, a worker for us, uh, you know, part-time. And it was just a, back to what it was when I first started working here. It was like the upbeat person, always cracking up, always trying, cracking jokes. But I, what one thing I did notice with her from the very beginning was that she, whatever task was going to be given, she was on it and she was going to complete it and she was just go 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 on it. And um, that was the one thing I, I you know, I, right from the right from the beginning I, I noticed that. And the second thing I noticed is that it with her it was never just about it I or me. It was like what can we offer to my people, and like. If she was gonna get, you know, information from us regarding her, um, regarding her her academic assistance, she was gonna pass that on to make sure other people had that same information. So it was she wasn't just getting it for herself; she was also getting it for uh, for her her family, for uh, all the people around, and that's awesome. Um, I do see. She's gonna do uh, great things. I mean, she's just this, this type of person that has this positive, happy energy. Um, I haven't seen a, another side of hers, and, uh, and I'm, I'm just blessed that I've seen that. So for this student, I'm t or this college graduate I'm talking about is Charo Barrios, uh, and she is getting an AA in social science and will be transferring to Humboldt State University. So for the next college graduate, um, I got to build a communication relationship with this person over the last few years, the last three three years or so, and um, she, you know, from what I can get from the you know those conversations, she was again she was she was a very upbeat person, knew what she was wanting, knew what she what she wanted to tackle, and you know was really spearheading that, um, and. It just kind of like once it was she got to the finish line of the first stage, I was just so blown away by how much she what she completed within that just first um, that first stage uh, at the finish line. And, uh, you know, moving forward, I, I, I can't even you know, I could definitely see her, you know, pursue the all these career paths and receive the highest honors in each of these easily um you know because if she was really so strong driven head driven about getting these things completed and she did it uh that just speaks volume alone 
Uh, so the next, the student, the college graduate I'm talking about is Alexis Ramirez. Uh, she graduated with three AA degrees from the Riverside C Community College, and these degrees fall under social science, mathematics, and humanities. And she'll be attending Cal Poly Panoma. So for this next college graduate, um, I've got to actually uh, have her as a student for the last four plus years, but in distance wise. And our relationship was built all through teleconferences. Um, you know, a few times we have met and, um, but yeah, she was so consistent of always, you know, seeing what assistance programs we had be on top of every scholarship she any assistance she needed to turn in she would turn it in and she was just always upbeat and this has started back in high school uh and then i academically every time she was turning in something she was turning these uh these report cards these uh transcripts with such a high high gpa and uh they you know, i was just blown away I mean there was so there was so much consistency of 4.0s in her background that that is just you know and the conversations we had she was you know just always very head strong knew what she wanted knew what she was going to do and she tackled every every obstacle that way she just she nothing was going to stop her I I don't think I can't think of a conversation we had where she ever mentioned that she was going to had to slow down or she had to, you know, do this. It was always like, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get it, you know, go succeed through this. And she did. And so even throughout her college life, she succeeded in such a, at a, such a high level. Um, so I've been very blessed to have her, uh, you know, uh, to build a relationship with her. And uh, I, I could truly say that it was my first relationship building with a tribal member that, that didn't live in this area that it lived in this immediate area. And, but we, we still, I could still feel that. I'm like, I was giving her everything I could give her. And um, I just hope she felt the same. Uh, you know, I try to make really strongly make sure she felt that no matter how far she lived away, that she um, was gonna receive the same respect, the same uh, energy and the same, you know, uh, guidance in these, in these processes by me um at a high level so yeah i just her, her future i i mean i can't say enough that, you know she can she can conquer anything <laughs> i mean she can go uh eat multiple different career paths and then succeed at such a high level in these career paths um but yeah i don't think her uh re road has ended i mean i think she's she's knocked out uh, stage one, she's on stage two. I think she's going to keep going to stage three, you know, all the way up to her possible, her doctorates. Um, I just really feel that, yeah, she's, she can, she can get to those, those places. The student I am talking about is, uh, Alicia Hirda, and she is going to be receiving a bachelor's degree in kinesiology and from Sonoma State University. For this next college graduate, um, I I got to see her path uh, be established. You know, starting from high school, I didn't really ha I didn't have her as a student. Uh, she didn't come to our program on a regular basis um, or anything like that. And I didn't didn't really get to build a a bridge with her until her high school life. But in her high school life, she was just so positive and you know wanting to complete things and then complete things at the best of her ability at the highest possible level and she did I mean she was um, always you know coming in with you know strong GPAs for recognition and the thing though what I, I will say is that we built a relationship in the sense that she didn't come to our program regularly but she was uh, we had this bond that we could she knew that she can get her assistance from her tribe, but also, you know, know that she has someone from, you know, behind her to support her in any way possible. And uh, as the years went on, um, she never once that I ever see her give any type of 
like negative energy. It was always a positive smile on her face. Um, you know, always up going. I doubt that she, throughout all these years I have not seen any other aspect, anything different from her. Uh, and then she pursued on to college. And then uh, when she did college, she stuck with the, you know, the game plan of, you know, of getting things done in a timely manner. And then also like tackling uh, goals that she had for herself, for her personal life and, you know, achieving those goals at such a young age. Um, and, you know, I, it was, I was very fortunate to have a relationship with her, but then also I, could, I was able to see her mom on a regular basis and, you know, and I could, we can talk about her and those things. So I had that bridge with the, the mother that, was, that helped a lot too. But yeah, again, she she knocked things out. She was, you know, she had a goal set for herself, you know, and she went to go tackle them. And the goals are not even all tackled yet because she's not even finished. Uh, I really do think that she could be anything she wants. Um, she doesn't, you know, I she just has this aura about her that anything, any field that she gets into, she will have a you feel the positive that was coming comes from her. Uh, so the college graduate I'm talking about is Marissa Land. Uh, she is graduating from Santa Rosa Junior College in AA on the psychology and will be attending Sonoma State University. That is the end of our show here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, congratulations to the graduates. Congratulations to the families. You all did splendid and very well, especially coping with this whole COVID-19 crisis. And we appreciate everything that you all do. And we are here on standby with anything that you need, any assistance. And we are here rooting for you, hoping and praying that you do well. And we look forward to seeing what you become in your future. Give us a like and subscribe, man. You know, we're here just hanging out, kicking it. We're launching this new platform that's never been done before by the education department. New charted waters, especially for me editing. I've never done this before, but hey, I guess the video turned out good if you're watching it, right? But anyways, uh, yeah, tune in for more. Uh, we're going to have a lot more things going on, educational videos, stuff like that. So uh, be prepared. And again, thank you guys. Congratulations and have a good one.